Thank you, Gary. Fellow governors, Governor Carville, Governor Peterson, and members of the press are here. Ladies and gentlemen, I love being governor. It's a great experience. But someone said, and if any of you in this audience are going through your mind about the possibility of any of you running for governor, bear in mind this, there is no book, there's no instructions that tell you how to be governor. So I took a course. It started in January 1997, and the course ended in January 1973. In the meantime, I had been a member of the House. I had been Speaker of the House for six years. I had been Lieutenant Governor. And I had been Minority Leader in the House. Those things, in my judgment, helped me to execute the office in trying times. Everybody has problems, whoever comes into the governorship, whatever political party they're associated with. But I want to say this to you. As far as the press is concerned, everybody has good and bad days with the press. In fact, if my memory is correct, it was probably in Governor Carville's first term, which started in 19... 49, that the governor started having the first, first press conferences. It was something that prior governors, I don't believe, and that's no reflection, it just wasn't a custom. But the press sometimes can be very cordial, and sometimes they can be very disrespectful. One instance I remember in specific as far as the press in this state is concerned. One of the columnists wrote a story about, and at the bottom of the story he wrote, and we had two state senators at the time who were ill. And the press and that particular columnist, at the conclusion of what he wrote, he said, what two state senators are not likely to live out their terms. One of those state senators had a young son at the time, eight or nine years old, and I got to thinking to myself, if that young boy didn't know his father was seriously ill, he would bound if he saw that. He would bound to ask his mother about his dad. I thought that was a terrible thing to write about any individual, whether he was a state senator or whatnot. But by and large, and Governor Peterson didn't mention this, but he went through an experience with the press of the press taking the liberty of going through his garbage at the governor's house. I didn't have experience that, Russ, fortunately. <laughs> anyway, as time goes on, and I want to say this to you, Gary, just, just a minute ago, you were about to, 15 years behind that press, that uh, veto message you read that you were talking about reading wasn't in the 40s, it was in, it was during Carvel's second term, and I was Speaker of the House at the time, and I was one of the ones that cast the 21st vote to override that veto to restore capital punishment. And there was a reason for that, but that's not necessarily at this time. I had voted for it previously. But like I said earlier, ladies and gentlemen, I enjoyed being governor, and I know that, uh, that sometimes uh, you wonder why, but like I said earlier, what I really meant was when I first went to the legislature in 1957, I wasn't there long before a lot of people did this, before I started looking upstairs to see how it was up there. and. Uh, in the back of mine. I've been accused of running for governor for 14 years before I got elected governor. And whether that's true or not, I enjoyed it. And I want to say this to you, that we've had a lot of great men serve this state 
from the time that uh, that that on <laughs> this date in 1787 when we literally became the first state. Now there's one, one other thing I want to mention before I sit down, Gary. I want to be don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. We have a constitutional office called the Lieutenant Governor. It was created at the uh, at the Constitutional Convention in 1897. You know, not necessarily is the Lieutenant Governor position a stepping stone to the Governor. There's only been three people who have been elected Lieutenant Governor since 1900. Only three people that were elected lieutenant governor and subsequently elected governor. Two of us happen to be here today. Governor Carville was, was a, served his first elected office as lieutenant governor from 1945 to 49. I had the opportunity to serve as lieutenant governor from 1965 to 69. And our present congressman at large, Michael Castle, is the other person who was elected lieutenant governor and then subsequently uh, was elected governor. Now jokingly, about a year ago, I said to our present lieutenant governor, I said, you know something? Lieutenant governor, go lieutenant governor is not necessarily a stepping stone to the governorship, and I recited just what I've just said to you people. But the lieutenant governor since Governor Carville's time and my time in that position, has become a more prominent position in state government, even though that person, whoever it is, serves as president of the Senate when you're lieutenant governor. But otherwise, the responsibilities are not of any magnitude. So I said to her when I mentioned that, I was pleased don't let that in any way deter you, whatever you're going to do. This is before she, the present lieutenant governor made an announcement to run for governor uh, this coming year. It's my pleasure being here with you, those of you who are present, and with my fellow people who are governors and the members of the press, Dave and Jim and Gary. And I'll conclude by saying, may the good Lord take a liking to you like he has us.